Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod, BTFD alert. Take advantage of this dip. In today's show, we'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as well as leveraged crypto traders are hit hard with 872 million liquidated in a single day amid this Bitcoin price drop. We'll also be discussing GBTC sees 166 million outflow despite the CEO's equilibrium remark. We'll also be discussing 10.5 trillion asset manager BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF now officially holds 270,000 BTC and only took them three months to accomplish it. We'll also be discussing breaking news out of China. Are they about to start their bidding with this Hong Kong ETF set to launch this Monday, both for the Bitcoin ETF spot, as well as for Ethereum? Will this spark a rally? We'll be talking about it. We'll also be discussing BlackRock and Fidelity ETF bombshell triggers a massive $75 trillion Bitcoin price prediction. That's right. I'll be breaking all this down for you. All this, plus so much more in today's show. If you're new to the channel, important to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Also very important to show your support by pumping the likes as it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm and it helps pump the stream and it's always greatly appreciated. Today, big day in crypto, another sat stack in Saturday. This is podcast episode number 1608. I'm your host, JV. It's April 13th, 2024 and Bitcoin just correct $5,000 in the past 24 hours. It is dropping. However, a great opportunity pre-having to be stacking them sats. Take advantage of sat stacking Saturday. And just saying, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Checking out Coin360, as you can see. Let me refresh this just to make sure it's the latest numbers. I'm going to refresh uh, coinmarketcap.com as well. So here we go. According to Coin360, Bitcoin's still above 64,800, only down 4% of the day. And according uh, to this, Ether is trading just above 3,000, down 6%. And the alts, can you say Rex City, massive beat in XRP down to 48 cents, like, whoa. And uh, checking out coinmarketcap.com, holy moly, the market cap shed a lot. We're sitting at a 2.29 trillion market cap with 110 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. But look at that Bitcoin dominance. It's up several percent on the day, all the way up to 55%. Now this happens. I think it's when the alts, especially the ish coins, such as the meme coins, a lot of the coins with no utility kind of go crazy. They need to be humbled. And that's what happened. Bitcoin takes the market dominance from them via a correction. Bitcoin maintains itself while the alts continue to get wrecked heavily. You have the Ether dominance also at 16% uh, percent even. My question for y'all, how high do you think that Bitcoin dominance will likely climb for this cycle? Holla at your boy. I think 60% plus is a given personally. Maybe we go as high as 70%. Time will tell. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. Virtually nada, except stable coins actually doing anything in the green. Because virtually everything is bleeding and in the red. So instead of the top gainers, here are the top losers for the past 24 hours. We got Ordi. Go figure, Pepe and EOS, all down between 25 and 28%. And checking out Crypto Bubbles. Ooh, can you say bloodbath? There's literally nothing in the top 100 in the green. That means every single thing is bleeding. Substantial losses, family. And this is just on the day. Stacks down 17%, uh, percent. Bonk down 22%, San down 25%, Pepe down 25%, Ordi down 29%. Pretty scary. And checking out the monthly, it's not much better. Uh, so yeah, you can see, I personally feel we had an alt season in the past six months, and a lot of these alts have been mooning, but now, again, Bitcoin's humbling them. And uh, checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated a 72 greed. Yesterday, 79 extreme greed. Last week, 75, and last month, an 88 in extreme greed. And we always watch this metric because the higher we get. So for example, yesterday we hit as high as a 79, and guess what? Today, major correction. So the higher this gets, the more likely of a correction. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown, here's the silver lining. Only five days left 
until Bitcoin having 2024 scheduled to take place April 19th. And look at the block. We surpassed 839,000 as soon as we hit 840,000, which means what, 953 more blocks. We're going to hit the infamous halving of 2024. And checking out the time chain calendar shows you the block uh, we're currently at. It shows you Bitcoin's market cap sitting pretty at 1.23 trillion. And you can currently trade $1 for 1598 Satoshis. So take advantage of it here on Sat Stack and Saturday while you still can. And let me know where you feel that Bitcoin price will likely take us, leading into the having roughly five days out. Anyways, fam, let's kick it off with a little bit of TA and check out some of the charts and why there is mass carnage in the markets. Headline here reads, Bitcoin dominance hits three-year high as Bitcoin price dip pressures the altcoins. And as I mentioned earlier, we hit 55% Bitcoin dominance. That's right. Bitcoin's market cap dom has hit its largest level in three years. Whoa, Nelly. That was like a thousand days as alts field renewed price pressure. That's what happens, family. And according to this data, crypto market cap spiked and even hit as high as 56.3%. And that was yesterday, April 12th, today being the 13th. So the Bitcoin price action suffered into the weekend with a liquidation cascade bringing Bitcoin currently in the 62,000 range. That's right. We dipped even thousands more here in the past, uh, what, 20 minutes since going live. Crazy, right? Altcoins face much worse conditions. According to data, many of the top 20 cryptos by market cap fell more than 15%. That's right. Can you say Rack City? Uh, quoting analysts here, I do typically or don't typically look at the Bitcoin dominance, but the chart is impressive considering the amount of new alts birthed into the market every day. That was according to Bagsy, a uh, crypto trader. And also we have Dan Crypto Trades among those noticing the difference and the drawdown between Bitcoin and the alts in the recent days, quoting them here. Yes, the actual hit on Bitcoin was very minimal and the total downside also wasn't very relevant. The real damage was done in the altcoin sector, which wiped out billions of open interest and made for Wix up to 50% as outlined here in the Bitcoin market cap dominance chart brought to you by TradingView. Now, alt season hopes to stay in play. That's right. Bitcoin bull market historically tends to see a dominance breakout in the early stages with alts then catching up once Bitcoin sees a period of prolonged consolidation. So far this year, altcoins, while performing very well, have not witnessed such conditions for a meaningful length of time. Forecasting what comes next, fellow trader uh, Mikey Bull, Crypto argued that the change would soon come, quoting him here, altcoins market cap is perfectly following the previous alts season step. This is the last shakeoff before it rips explosively upward, coupled with Bitcoin dominance downtrend, uh, downward trend. Uh, so there you go. And this chart you can see on your screen uh, compares Bitcoin and the alt dominance, drawing comparisons with the end of 2020, the point at which Bitcoin's price had escaped its previous macro trading range below 20 thousand dollars let's dive into our next story of the day keep the comments of flowing greatly appreciated uh lots of liquidations joe and this story was published before i went live and again we just liquidated probably a tremendous amount more but nonetheless here's the gist of what's happening currently the value of the crypto market is approximately it was 2.4 trillion a few hours ago but let's actually look on coin market cap right now it's only 2.2 trillion look how fast those trillies are dropping. This is pretty insane. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Let's go back here. Following a 7.4% decrease over the last day, the volume of the global crypto trade surged 36% Friday, reaching 114 billion. And before 8 a.m. on Friday, Bitcoin was trading above 70 Gs, baby. And it briefly jumped above 71,000 during the early morning trading sessions. However, Laura, resistance quickly emerged, causing the price to falter and subsequently fall sharply at 2 p.m. Look at that. There you go. The one-hour candle at 2 p.m. recorded a drop to a low of 65000 per biddy. The price managed to record a slight rebound from this low and is currently trying to claim 62000 63000 because we're another $5,000 down since the time of this article. That's how fast... We've been dropping, yo. It's crazy. Quoting analyst Vinny here. If Bitcoin can't hold 60,000 by Monday morning, this bull run is probably over. Now we have about 
what, a day and a half until Monday morning. And right now we're trying to hold on to 60. Uh, we're currently 61, 62, so time will tell. Bitcoin is down tremendously over the day, falling against the US dollar over the past month. The market volatility on Friday further led to a notable number of liquidations amongst crypto traders using leverage. Can't stress to proceed with caution, extreme caution, especially at around the time of a having trading with leverage fam, it's crazy. Around 275,000 crypto traders experienced liquidations, ouch, virtually all of them, with total losses approaching $1 billion. That was before dropping an additional 5,000 families, so these numbers are probably even way higher. So according to data from CoinGlass at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 871 million in leverage positions were liquidated in 24 hours hours, including 782 million from long positions and 91 million from short positions. Uh, shout out to Grand Buck. I greatly appreciate the super. He wrote, just keep the faith. Sage advice there. That's all you got to do because one Bitcoin is still equivalent to one Bitcoin, regardless of where the Bitcoin price temporarily goes in fiat terms, family. Don't forget it. And thank you, Grand Buck. While the global average price Bitcoin is currently back down to 62000 Bitcoin still trades at a premium in South Korea. Of course, it's trading at a premium uh, all around the world. Uh, Australia, I know we hit 100000 all-time high. Uh, UK. Uh, so anyways, we're going to keep an eye out on what's happening and, of course, the latest news as it comes in developing. But let's just keep the news flowing. I appreciate the comments. Let's dive into the latest with these Bitcoin uh, ETFs. Headline reads, GBTC sees 166 million outflow despite the CEO's equilibrium remark. What's going on, Mr. Sun and Shine? The Grayscale Bitcoin ETF GBTC continues to experience significant outflows with over 166 milli and more than 2,500 biddies withdrawn from the fund's holdings on Friday, April 12th, which was yesterday. According to Farside Investor Data, outflows from GBTC have exceeded 16.2 billion. Good Lord. Since the Bitcoin ETF's January launch, that was January 11th, uh, three months ago. Since the month of April, the daily outflows from the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust have been fluctuating between 75 milli and 300 milli. On the other hand, inflows into Bitcoin ETFs have been minimal, indicating declining investor engagement. A GBTC recorded significant outflows of $767 million this week, contributing to overall negative flows into the Bitcoin ETFs. Now, BlackRock has maintained strong support as assets under management for iBit. Bitcoin's ETF exceed $15 billion, narrowing the gap with Grayscale's Bitcoin reserves. A significant portion of GBTC outflows has likely flowed back into BlackRock. Now, Grayscale CEO Michael Sunshine hinted earlier in the week that outflows from Grayscale's Bitcoin trust might be stabilizing. Keyword, might be, because they're not, <laughs> suggesting optimism amongst traders and investors. However, current data indicates the current situation may not align with his optimism, unfortunately. One primary reason behind the massive GBTC outflows has been the high management fee the fund charges. However, Sun and Shine has been hesitant to cut the fees despite losing the flows to competitors. GBTC has the highest management fees out of all U.S. Bitcoin. Bitcoin ETFs pinned at 1.5% a year compared to the 0.3% average of its competitors. So yeah, it's like five, six times more fees. So hence why so many investors are ditching GBTC. Why wouldn't they change that fee sooner than later? Uh, you have any insights with that chat? Let me know. Sun and Shy noted that markets often exhibit high excitement when commodity exposure products like Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust first emerge. However, these products mature as time passes, leading the market consolidation as investors focus on few offerings. Now, according to Farside data, GBTC saw outflows of almost 18 million on April 10th, a significant decrease from 155 million outflows recorded April 9th. Good Lord. The previous low was February 26th when GBTC outflowed 22.4 million and the daily GBTC outflows average across the four months is more than a quarter billion at 257 million. GBTC launched in 2015 and converted to an ETF 
on January alongside the launch of the nine other spot Bitcoin ETFs after Grayscale won the lawsuit against the SEC, forcing it to review a GBTC conversion bid it denied. Now, bankrupt crypto lending firm Genesis recently offloaded approximately 36 million GBTC shares to acquire 32,000 Bitcoins. So there you have it, fam, definitely not helping the market when you have all of these outflows. Uh, but according to Sun and Shine, we're seeing an equilibrium, but maybe it spoke a little too soon, so we'll see. Something let's not forget though, uh, GBTC was the largest hodler of Bitcoin in the world. They had like 620,000 plus Bitcoin, but since the ETF launched and their conversion, they're now down to like 200 and something thousand. So I think BlackRock now has more Bitcoin at 270,000, which we're gonna be diving into here in a bit. But anyways, uh, we discussed Bitcoin ETFs from the outflows of GBTC. Now let's focus on the king, BlackRock, acquiring 270,000 biddies, like it ain't no thing. Headline reads, 10.5 trillion asset manager, BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF now holds 270,000 Bitcoins. Whoa. BlackRock released its financial results on Friday for the first quarter that ended March 31st, showing a record 10.5 trillion and assets under management, an increase of 1.4 trillion from the previous year. The asset manager spot Bitcoin ETF, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, maintained the dominant position in the US spot Bitcoin ETF market. And as of April 11th, iBit's Bitcoin holdings stood at approximately 270,000 Bitcoin with a notional value of over 18.9 billion dollars. Now, Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, recently said that iBit is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. He added that he is very bullish on the long-term viability of Bitcoin and is pleasantly surprised by the retail demand for BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. In fact, last week, BlackRock filed an amendment to its iBit prospectus, revealing that the fund now has nine authorized participants. They are ABN AMRO, Clearing USA, Citadel Securities, Citigroup Global Markets, Goldman Sachs, Jane Street Capital, JP Morgan Securities. Uh, we have Macare Capital, UBS Securities, and Virtu Americas. BlackRock also filed an app with the US SEC to launch a spot Ether ETF. Despite some optimism surrounding potential SEC approval of spot Ether ETF apps by May's deadline, skepticism continues to grow. Jan Van Eck, CEO of Van Eck, recently expressed his doubts, anticipating the rejection of his application in May from his firm. Moreover, there are reports the SEC may be trying to classify Ether as a security. Fink, however, believes that even if Ether is classified as a security, BlackRock can still launch a spot Ether ETF. In fact, Thursday, financial technology firm stablecoin provider Circle introduced smart contract capabilities aimed at enabling holders of BlackRock USD institutional digital liquidity fund to exchange their shares for USDC through Circle. Now, here's one thing I don't trust. That's USDC, aka Circle, because they're enemies of Bitcoin. At least Larry Fink, though, once clearly an enemy of Bitcoin publicly, he once bashed it and said it was an index for money laundering. At least now he's all on board claiming it's a flight to safety or a flight to quality, and he's now pumping our bags. So, I mean, we had the opportunity to front run Mr. Lawrence Fink and BlackRock and all of Wall Street, and it feels damn good. I'm just saying. We heard Kramer report that. Thank you. He said, he said, he said, we bought more bags. Till we got a sword back. Ah. Can't short your dork. We can't afford that. Nope. Now, we all know Bitcoin is the best asset. Do you agree? You agree? Agree. And there, there is no second best asset. Sell them. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss this breaking news coming out of China with these ETFs. Actually, Hong Kong, so on the outskirts of China, not the mainland, but close enough. Here we go. Headline reads, China is about to start its bidding. Will Hong Kong's Bitcoin ETF spark the having rally? Let's break it down, shall we? Uh, the potential approval, the first batch of the spot... ETFs in Hong Kong could be a big catalyst for Bitcoin's having rally. That's right. The Securities Regulator Commission, which is the SFC over there in Hong Kong, could approve the first batch of the spot Bitcoin ETFs by April 15th, which would be a few days right before the halving. Is that a coincidence? 
I think not. The Hong Kong regulator had reportedly accelerated the approval process for four spot Bitcoin ETFs, according to local news media reports. The potential approval could attract more buying demand for Bitcoin by offering Bitcoin exposure to both retail and institutional investors over there in Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong regulators could approve both Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs on April 15th, according to a crypto entrepreneur and investor, Lark Davis, who wrote the following, Hong Kong likely to approve both Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs as soon as Monday. China is about to start bidding the same week the Bitcoin halving is happening. Let's go. It'll take approximately two weeks to finalize ETF listing procedures on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange after the securities regulator green lights the initial set of spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now, the approval of the first spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong could catalyze Bitcoin's post having rally, according to Herbert Sim, chief operating officer of crypto exchange WebSea, who told Cointelegraph the following Having is not the only thing to look out for in the price action, but rather the upcoming Bitcoin ETF approval in Hong Kong, which also happens next week. The big banks of China will all have to start buying Bitcoin. Themselves too. Let the bidding begin. Sim noted that Hong Kong based ETFs will only add to the institutional demand and inflows created by large US ETF issuers such as BlackRock, which he expects to continue, quoting him here. And with this supply cut from the Bitcoin halving, the prices will definitely soar. Send it. Large investors or so called mega whales that are holding at least 10,000 biddies are accumulating Bitcoin at the current price level in anticipation of next week's approval, according to popular crypto commentator Bitcoin Mongers, April 12th post. Quoting them here the only cohort that is net accumulating Bitcoin is the largest whales, just ahead of Hong Kong ETF approvals and the Bitcoin having a positive contrarian signal if I had to guess. Meanwhile, the ETF inflows have been a significant part of the Bitcoin price rally. By February 15th, Bitcoin ETFs accounted for about 75% of new investment in Bitcoin as it surpassed the 50,000 mark. And Bitcoin's price action has been closely correlated with the net Bitcoin ETF inflows, according to Thomas Ferrer, co-founder of Apollo, who wrote the following. I would have thought it was extremely obvious that ETF flows are driving the Bitcoin price. So there you have it my crypto fam. Let me know your thoughts, how the market will likely react to these ETFs being launched potentially uh, in Hong Kong here soon. And uh, yeah. And do you think they will approve both spot Bitcoin and Ethereum collectively at the same time? Holla in that chat. Now for our feature story of the day, eh? Let's discuss BlackRock and Fidelity ETF bombshell triggering a massive $75 trillion Bitcoin prediction. Obviously, that's not price action. That's market cap. But to hit a $75 trillion market cap, we're talking $3.8 million Bitcoin price, according to ARK Invest, is Kathy Wood. So let's break this down. This was actually a Forbes article a couple of weeks ago, and I want to rehash this because this is actually pretty insightful. You know what I mean? The Bitcoin price added around 350% since crashing to a low of 15000 per Bitcoin. I'm curious, how many of you actually bought some biddies back when we tapped uh, 15,000 just over a year ago, family. Feels like yesterday. Largely thanks to a fleet of the Bitcoin ETFs taking Wall Street by storm. Now, after Coinbase revealed it's backing BlackRock's $5 trillion by 2030 game changer, famed stock picker and Bitcoin bull, Kathy Wood has hiked their Bitcoin price prediction, betting a coming Bitcoin price surge will give Bitcoin a market cap of $75 trillion by the end of the decade. Let's go back to coin market cap and check out Bitcoin's market cap right now and in the flesh. The market cap of Bitcoin today, right? $1.2 trillion. Dollars. So with Bitcoin having a 1.2 trillion market cap, what is that? Roughly a 70x, right? From the current uh, market cap, 70x from here. Can you see that? Please do let me know because you know the price would soar crazily on that. Uh, quoting her here, last year we put out our bull case for Bitcoin. It was 1.5 million dollars, said Wood, chief executive of Disruptive Technology Investor, ARC. And she said that on stage at the New York Bitcoin Investor Day conference, when it was reported 
by Business Insider, quoting her again, with this institutional green light that the SEC has provided, kicking and screaming, though it did, the analysis we have done is that if institutional investors were to allocate a little more than 5% of their portfolios into Bitcoin, as we think they will over time, that alone would add $2.3 million to the projection I just gave you. So Wood said, referring to the US SEC, waving through almost a dozen spot Bitcoin ETFs in January. That's just based off 5% allocation from these institutions. Let's not forget BlackRock a few years back uh, released a report or a study, and I covered it numerous times on the channel, that their ideal Bitcoin allocation for a portfolio is 84.9%. I'm not even going to speculate what that would mean for the uh, Bitcoin price action, but you can use your imagination, family. Now, Wall Street giants BlackRock and Fidelity have emerged as the two largest of the new Bitcoin ETF issuers, raking in assets under management of around $15 billion and $9 billion, respectively. And now it's way higher, just FYI. This was as of a few weeks ago. Woods own ARC21 shares uh, for Bitcoin ETF now holds 40,000 biddies, where two $2 billion on behalf of investors. Wood's new Bitcoin price prediction could see Bitcoin hitting $3.8 million by 2030. Six years, family. Can you see it? A massive near 6,000% increase from the current Bitcoin price in a market cap of $1.2 trillion, which ironically is precisely where we're at today, quoting her again. We think Bitcoin has miles to go. We're at the very beginning of really putting in place the financial ecosystem native to the internet and disintermediating all the toll takers. So there you go. Now, after a period of huge growth following their launch, the new spot Bitcoin ETFs, including Grayscale's coveted trust, saw outflows over four straight days. Yeah, I mean, outflows have not been slowing down, but as we already touched upon, uh, Michael Sunshine, the CEO of BlackRock, says things are going to be at an equilibrium, but we'll soon see. Uh, but let me know your thoughts uh, specifically here regarding uh, Bitcoin tapping a $75 trillion market cap within the next six years. And ideally off of that hitting a price of 3.8 million per coin now i remember when kathy wood first made her prediction of bitcoin hitting a million by 2030 then she upped it we all knew her bear scenario her base case and her bull case and she keeps up in the bull case and i'm digging it shout out kathy wood right she's just expressing her bullishness because i think they underestimated the bitcoin etf uh, demand. And I think the demand shock, uh, which is unprecedented in any ETF market, uh, meaning the Bitcoin success from uh, the Bitcoin ETF inflows has been unlike anything we've ever witnessed in the history of ETF launches. And I think because of that, they're even that much more bullish and just a very modest allocation into Bitcoin from these major asset managers is a big move, right? Major moves, just 5% allocation. We talking about $3.8 million Bitcoin, 75 trillion market cap. That's a lot of money. I know a lot of people are gonna speculate, but is that is that even possible? Well, yeah, there's roughly, I hear now, $900 trillion worth of the total addressable market, meaning all the money in the world, right? And Bitcoin is the apex predator. So where will these billionaires and institutions likely park their capital? Shout out to Ricky Norwood, appreciate the sub. Likely into Bitcoin because there is no second best, right? I shared a graph. I'm actually gonna pull it up because it's very insightful. I shared it in yesterday's uh, podcast. I wanna cover this with you. I'm gonna pull it up over on X. I just got to find it. So bear with me a second here. And if you're not following me on X, what are you doing with your life? Uh, make sure to follow me on X. I appreciate it. We currently got 33.8 thousand followers and I would love to have 100 thousand followers. Uh, here's the chart. Check it out. Uh, I replied to Peter Schiff on this one. I got a lot of love. Uh, Peter Schiff wrote, gold is now above 2,400. What's happening is not normal. Gold doesn't typically move like this, especially on no news. If this means the ZIRP, QE, and deficit spending chickens are finally coming home to roost, the magnitude and velocity of these gains is about to accelerate. And he got over a half a million views. So I responded, one second here. Uh, $1 invested into Bitcoin or gold in 2009 is now worth 
That $1 in Bitcoin is now worth $91 million. And that $1 in gold, again, 14 and a half years ago, is now worth $2. So what does that tell us? That means gold doubled in price. It doubled in value in almost 15 years. Big whoop. Bitcoin, 91 million percent increase. One dollar turns into 91 million. And this is a chart I got from uh, Willie Wu, the on-chain analyst. Shout out Willie Wu. I mean, that's the tail of the tape right there. And I actually wrote something about it as well. I'm going to read to you because I just want to share my thoughts on after I analyze that uh, myself here. Let me just pull this up. So this is what I wrote. I don't understand gold bugs who think gold is a viable store of value. Yes, gold is up 2x in the past 14 and a half years, meaning if you invested $1 into gold in January 2009, today it would be worth a whopping two bucks, ultimately meaning gold can't even keep up with inflation. Meanwhile, if you invested just a dollar into Bitcoin in January of 2009, your $1 investment into Bitcoin would now be worth $91 million. (laughs) <laughs> Plus, let's not forget, corrupt governments can and will seize your gold as history has shown us. So when it comes down to the ultimate store of value, there is no second best. Bitcoin is king. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. I firmly believe it. Where else are you going to park your cash? There is no second best store of value. There's Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin. Just saying. But let me know your thoughts surrounding all these predictions I just shared with you. 75 trillion market cap, 3.8 million dollar Bitcoin by the year 2030, as per ARK Invest's Kathy Wood. Holla.